All right, Mr. Larson presents Manifest Destiny in American History. Uh, well, it's not gonna be as good as Mr. Beats, but what I want to let you know is our first unit of study is gonna be all about Manifest Destiny. And what the United States is gonna be doing is they're gonna be flexing their muscle and they're gonna be expanding our nation from the Mississippi River all the way out to California. Now, we're going to be able to stretch our country and we're gonna be growing. And part of that growing process, there's gonna be a lot of new things going on. Now, if you remember, Spain had all that Southwest um, United States territory. Uh, and in 1821, we had the Mexican Revolution, uh, Mexico took over that area. And so we go all the way up to the Pacific Ocean, there was conflict over who owned the land. So you remember back during the Louisiana Purchase that Lewis and Clark went up Missouri River, went across the Northwest Territory, discovered Oregon. So that's kind of what we're gonna be focusing on. So for this next week uh, or two, that's gonna be our main focus. So I'm gonna go back and forth between the PowerPoint and the lesson. And so basically you can see what's going on. So here we go. So the first thing I'm going to do uh, is I'm trying to get my PowerPoint lesson. So let's go up here. I think it's somewhere in here. Uh, there we go. Right there. All right. Here we go. And we're going to be looking at um, Manifest Destiny. Now, if you look, this is a link. So up there at the top, yeah, I'm going to try to, there you go. So up there at the top, you see the Manifest Destiny, that's a link. And so that is a video you need to watch. One of the things I do want you to think about though, so before you go on any further is kind of pause the video and look at the picture. Look at all the information that's being provided in there. So pause the video. All right, so hopefully you pause the video and you thought about the picture. So a couple of things you need to be focusing on there is, if you see the lady, that's floating above. That's kind of like our divine providence. If you go back to the early settlement when people came to the United States seeking religious refuge, and they always talked about the divine providence of the United States. So that is basically a symbol that was painted uh, to show the divine providence of moving westward. If you also look there in the left hand side of the screen, you see the buffalo. You also see the Native Americans. We know through Jackson's presidency the Native Americans were pushed west and throughout this whole process dealing with Native Americans, we've made trees with them, we've broken them. And so again, we're just pushing them further and further west. You also can see that you have the covered wagons up there. You have the one lone rider that's right above the covered wagon there. That's to indicate the Pony Express coming. You look further back to the right. Uh, you see the railroads coming. You see stagecoach. You see the American settlers that are moving westward because they're starting new technology, new cultures, communication, innovations, and so forth. So basically what we're going to be talking about today is this westward expansion of political, economic, and social effects on the United States. Thousands upon thousands of pioneers and settlers started moving to west. Now, part of that, there's going to be some struggles. There also be some trials. So again, remember, um, you don't need to take your own notes, but you need to kind of be thinking about it. And the good thing is, you can pull up the PowerPoint at the same time you're listening to the video. So here's the Lord of the West. Now, as the westward expansion was going, we wanted to see us growing our country. We did establish the Indian Territory, you know, in Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska area. But they discovered soon that the Native Americans were making a go of it, and they were actually being able to farm the land. So you see the second bullet there, land speculators. Now, we know what a speculator is. They go out and purchase a bunch of land or products, um, expecting and speculating that the economy is gonna grow of some sort. So we had these land speculators and they were buying these large areas of land and they were subdividing it and they were making money. Soon after that, the manufacturers and the merchants followed because they knew as the Americans traveled west towards California into Oregon, as they traveled, they would need supplies along the way. They helped to make money. And of course, you see that, <coughs> sorry, it's my asthma. It's nothing else, asthma and allergies. But you see there, they were targeting certain consumers because they knew as the settlers traveled, they couldn't take all the supplies with them because it was too heavy. All right, so 
organ fever. Now, one of the things you need to know about is this. We go back to Lewis and Clark. We claim that area, Oregon, Washington, part of Idaho, because of the Lewis and Clark Exposition. Great Britain also claimed that area. We know that Spain claimed that area. We also know that uh, Russia claimed that area as well. Now, the reason why we're gonna stake a claim to it, it's what we, what we do. That's, that's what our, um, our motive has been in the United States. Because of that rich, fertile land, you see there by 1843, thousands of people were traveling from Missouri to Oregon, and they had to travel on the Oregon Trail. Now, you know the, old, the, the game about the Oregon Trail. So you see this map here. So the blue part indicates um, the current United States. That orangish color there, that's part of the Louisiana Purchase. Now, the purple area you see, that went from Spain to Mexico in 1821. Now, you look down there at the bottom where it says, we got Florida, and it's kind of striped there. The reason is, in 1819, remember, we had the Adams-Onesis Treaty. However, in 1821, when Mexico had the revolution and overthrew Spain, Mexico tried to claim that area uh, as well because it was part of the old Spain. Now, the United States is not going to give it back, but you also know, during the Jackson presidency, which was 2832, we, we really didn't deal much with Florida. So just kind of put that on the burn for a while. Now, you see that President Monroe, we gotta go all the way back to President Monroe, he set a line, and if you look at the red line here, so I'm gonna hopefully you can see, the red line right here indicates the southern border of the Louisiana Purchase and the northern border of Spain. Now again, this is in 1819, so it's still part of the adams Onesis Treaty there. So it was the part there, and at that point in 1819, Spain gave up control of Oregon, yet Great Britain still took claim of it as well. Now, Russia soon after gave up the claim all the way south from Alaska in 1824. So in 1824, Oregon fever really started hitting, and so uh, Great Britain and the United States had a joint occupation. Now, you know, we don't get along with Great Britain. So at the time, President Adams, this is John Quincy Adams, he offered to split Oregon on the 49th parallel. Now that's another number you need to remember. Because if you remember, we did set a treaty from Maine through the Great Lakes, through the Wisconsin, Minnesota area with Great Britain. Now what uh, John Quincy Adams is going to do, he wants to establish all the way across on the 49th parallel. Now, in 1825, Great Britain refused to do this. That's going to come back later on. Now, because of Oregon, trapping was huge. You had these mountain men uh, that were getting across the Rocky Mountains. So if you remember on the Lewis and Clark expedition, Sacagawea was the daughter of the Shoshone um, chief there, and they knew the area. And so they had to camp out on the eastern side of the Rocky Mountains until it was safe to, um, to passage across there. And so you see that in this area, we're gonna have these uh, rough um, mountain men that are gonna be starting leading these expeditions because the normal settler just couldn't make the trip on their own. They really didn't have the information. So you see two guys, you need to remember these guys' names, Kit Carson and Jim Bridger. Now they began to become guides because they knew the trails. And the reason why they had to become guides is because they overtrapped. They were out in the area for about you know, 30, 40 years after Lewis and Clark up to the present. And they lived in those mountains and they trapped and they, and they overtrapped. They didn't take uh, conservation measures. So most Americans at the time did support this manifest destiny. They felt like it was their divine right, the providence to go all the way from the East Coast all the way across the United States, America at the time, as we call it, uh, to the West Coast. Now, the problem is how to get from the East to the West. It was tough. So you see there in that third bullet, Dr. Marcus Whitman and his wife uh, first started, um, was one of the settlers, and their key purpose was to start a mission. So it goes back 
to like the pilgrims. It talks about the, um, the new settlers coming over in 1820, 18, uh, 1620, 1632, uh, the United States leaving uh, the persecution. So you have the pilgrims and you have uh, the Puritans that came back in our country in the early 1600s. Now you see this mission work going there as well. Now, unfortunately, this has been an issue for many, many years. As the settlers tra started traveling from the east to the west, they brought diseases with them, and they killed the Native Americans in the area. We've seen that before. Uh, a new term I want to remember is the word immigrants. Now, those are United States citizens that are leaving the United States. Now, remember, that is only from the East Coast to the Mississippi River. Now, we have the Louisiana Territory, but they're not states yet. And so these immigrants are people that are leaving the United States into another country because the Oregon Territory wasn't ours. And we'll see many of them travel down to California area as well. So those are immigrants. Now, traveling on the, um, the Oregon Trail was very difficult. Now, we've seen this picture before. So these are the uh, prairie schooners, and those are ships on land is what they are. And if you remember, I said earlier that merchants went out as well because you put your entire life in that wagon. And again, uh, you're not riding, you're walking. And so these merchants would target the settlers and the travelers as they were going. So they didn't have to pack as much food, uh, supplies, because they knew there were merchants along the way. Now, people would leave from Independence, Missouri. And again, that is the key. Remember, we said that St. Louis was the gateway west. And so people would leave Independence, Missouri, and they would travel 2,000 miles. Now, you see this map down here. Hopefully, you can see my cursor on there. But they are leaving from Independence, Missouri, and they're traveling 2,000 miles up to Oregon. Now, they went through the South Pass. Now, at the same time, I want you to think about, follow my cursor, Lewis and Clark went this way. They went further north. So with Kit Carson and um, Jim Bagger, they were able to find a better route through the South Pass of the Rocky Mountains. That's where the Snake River and the Columbia River meet up together. In 1844, we're gonna jump forward. President Polk, as he was running, and he was President of the United States, he truly pushed this idea of manifest destiny. Now we're gonna talk about uh, when President Polk is going to get Texas and Florida, and that's gonna be in the lesson tomorrow. But his, his big claim, um, his, his campaign speech, was 5440 or fight. Now you remember we talked about Tippecanoe and Tyler too. So this is what he did. So now focusing on the map here, the green area is current day Canada. The yellowish area is current day United States. Now the line right here that you see, the 49th parallel, that's what John Quincy Adams proposed years ago. Well, when President Polk comes in, he, be he beats Henry Clay in the election of 1844. Poor Henry Clay never seems to be president. And so he wanted to push west, kind of like the old war hawks we talked about, remember, in the War of 1812? They wanted to push up into Canada, I take that land. Well, President Polk is bringing back that philosophy. Now, what he's going to push for is to move the line between Great Britain and the United States to the 54th, 40 parallel, pushing it up further. Many historians believed he just wanted the 49th parallel. And so his ploy was ask for more, settle for what you really want. It got to the point where President Polk was ready to go to war. Now we know tomorrow he's going to pick a fight with Mexico over Texas. And that's when Texas joins the Union. Um, and so he was willing to fight Great Britain again. And so basically, in 1846, the United States and Great Britain, United States and Great Britain settled on the 49th parallel, which is what we currently have today. It was the same exact boundary that was proposed 21 years ago, but Great Britain rejected it. So basically, they didn't want to fight with the United States, and we kind of got what we wanted. So I'm going to go back a little bit here. I, you know I always do. So 
right now, as we leave to, right now as I'm standing, we have Louisiana Purchase. We have up here the 49th parallel. So now in 1845, we have joined in Oregon. Now this purple area, we don't have it as of yet. Spoiler alert, tomorrow we'll get it. So here we go back to where we are. So those of you who went to DC, uh, this is a picture from the old Capitol building that uh, Polk, when he was a representative before he became president, and you see the Speaker of the House as well. So here's the map that we currently have. This is what we're going to be looking at tomorrow. So we have this unorganized territory because now we have the 49th parallel. This belongs to Mexico. We are going to pick up Texas tomorrow. We're also going to pick up Florida tomorrow officially. So what I want you to do is I need you to watch this video on the Oregon Trail. It is posted in Google Classroom. It also is posted on RenWeb. So you need to watch that and that will kind of give you an idea. So hopefully you have a good idea about Manifest Destiny. Now, these exit tickets, yes, you have to do them, are gonna be posted on RenWeb and Google Classroom. So again, if you have any questions, make sure you email me about that. So we finished. This is our preview of Manifest Destiny. Remember, the United States wants to kind of show its strength, you know, lifting weights a little bit. We want to expand from the Mississippi River all the way over to the West Coast. Uh, we will learn a term later from sea, Atlantic Ocean, to shining sea, the Pacific Ocean. So. I'll see you again next time, buddy.